My name is Vineet, and today we're talking about FPGAs. You might have heard of FPGAs recently in all different industries and been curious as to what FPGAs actually are or how they work. Well, an FPGA, FPGA stands for Field Programmable Gate Array, and it's basically just a silicon chip that has reprogrammable digital circuitry. And so each of these FPGAs has a number of configurable logic blocks. There's up to thousands of these logic blocks in any given FPGA. And between them, you have reconfigurable wiring circuitry. So you can basically configure these logic blocks in any given configuration for whatever application you need. And so you have dedicated hardware logic for any given task. And you can dedicate certain sections of an FPGA tip to that particular task. So you can imagine I can have my digital logic in one part of the chip configured to do something, whereas I can have a completely different task running with true parallel operation configured in a whole different part of the chip. So this could be important for single point control applications, for example, where I have I.O. pins on my FPGA to interface each of these digital circuit blocks with the outside world. And so I can drive this top circuit, for example, with an analog signal. So imagine I have some analog signal. Well, I can run that to an analog to digital converter. And I can drive that analog signal directly into the chip. And perhaps I want to do some kind of signal processing, maybe some filtering, for example. Well, I could then take my filtered signal and send that to one of the output pins, a digital to analog converter, for example, and send that filtered signal then to the outside world. Um, it might make more sense if we use a more real-world application. So let's say I wanted to monitor the temperature of something and control that temperature. Well, I can have a temperature sensor running somewhere, and I can take that analog voltage signal and send that into the FPGA. And to be a little more specific, my digital logic block can actually be a PID controller. Those of you that are doing PID control will be very familiar with a PID controller where you have some analog signal or some, some basically some measured sensor signal, and you can then compare that sensor to some desired value. And based on the difference between those, you can output something to actuate that temperature. And so in this case, I can send it to a fan, for example. And so if I wanted to decrease the temperature, well, I could do that basically by speeding up the fan and making the fan go faster, I can read the temperature again and do that over and over again. Well, that control loop speed is very important. And if I wanted to do multiple control loops, I could dedicate different parts of the FPGA chip and sec section those off as well. So I can have multiple PID loops running truly in parallel. This is very different to a processor-based system, which is something that you might already be familiar with. A processor-based system, or a CPU, is also a, a silicon chip, except instead of running things with dedicated blocks for any given task, your operating system figures out how to sequentially come up with a list of instru instructions. And then the processor just takes turns executing each function one at a time. So inherently, a processor is very good at doing many different things all at the same time by sequentially executing an instruction set, whereas an FPGA has dedicated blocks of silicon which are given running independently and not necessarily sharing resources for any given task. So that should give you a, a brief introduction to how FPGAs work and how you get true reconfigurability with hardware-timed speed and true parallel operation for any given application.